Us a quick uh, intro now to our next discussion. All doesn't appear to be well at the Supreme Court of Nigeria. And this follows the leak of a protest letter by 14 justices of the Apex Court, led by the second most senior justice, Kayode Ariwola, addressed to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Mohammed, over their poor working conditions, uh, such as accommodation, vehicles, electricity tariff, supply of diesel, amongst others. And the aggrieved justices also accused the CJN of abandoning his responsibilities and diverting funds meant for the running of the Apex Court. But the CJN, Justice Muhammad, responded through his media aide, Ahuraka Isa, that the current challenges at the Supreme Court were a reflection of the prevalent economic realities in the country. But he also chided his colleagues for going public with their complaints, saying they ought to be seen and not heard. And joining us in the studio now is a social development advocate and a lawyer, Jide Olugun. Welcome to TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. What is going on in the Supreme Court? I think it's just <laughs> it's a reflection of where we are as a nation. And um, I want to pick it from the public relations angle. Because if, you, if I paraphrase the American Society of Public Relations that it is a strategic communication between an organization and the public to sustain uh, mutual benefits and understanding. And when you talk about publics, in public relations, you talk about the internal publics, the external publics, you have the stakeholders. So right now, these are the internal publics we are talking about. So the CGN is expected to have embarked on strategic communication to listen to the concerns of the other justices and then because he himself complained that judges are meant to be seen. Uh, Not to be uh, heard. Exactly. And if that is the case, why don't you ensure that that is practiced? Because they cannot be suffering and keep to that template. And it's so embarrassing that at that level, we are having crisis. And in public relations, before you have a crisis, issues must have been on the table that you can manage. That's why you say you're either proactive or reactive. And concerning the Supreme Court, Supreme Court was established in 1956 as an appellate court, and then you could appeal to the uh, Judicial Division of the Privy Council of the UK if you are not satisfied. And in 1963, it became the highest court in the land, and it represents the epitome of justice. obtaining justice. So if right now the justices who are expected to deliver justice are not enjoying justice, we must be worried as a nation. And shouldn't we also be worried about even, you know, the content? Some may even say now is the time for us to look at the content, so the quality of judgments they've um, delivered in the past under these present uh, conditions. That is the pain I have currently. It will take the Supreme Court a long time to come out of this because recall that in most recent times, citizens have been complaining about the quality of some of the judgments coming from there. But interestingly, that is the highest court. So even whether you are satisfied or not. And this is how it operates. If you are not satisfied with the decision of the high court, let me start from the high court, you appeal to the court of appeal. If you are not satisfied, you appeal to the Supreme Court. So you expect that even if I have been denied justice in the high court, in the court of appeal, I should be able to get it in the Supreme Court. And it is expected that those who sit in that capacity are righteous. In court, because that is the essence of justice, that they do the right thing, they are not influenced and things. But with what we are reading now and hearing, they, it, it's, they, they are exposed to corruption. They are exposed to corruption because when justices at that level are now complaining, they don't have electricity supply, which the CJN ascribed to national problem, and we address that later, internet services not provided for them in their homes for them to link up with. Uh, the internet world to, you know, put their judgments together. They're given to Kumbo cars. Exactly, <laughs> refurbished vehicles. Yes. Some of the new uh, justices are still in rented apartments. You see, and they complain about not having access to training. They, you know, different kinds of complaints. And, and, the, and then they say that the chief justice can go on a vacation or what they call with it. Family members, with family members, foreign, tra foreign, foreign trips. trips. And uh, they can't 
get no, anyone. Even with their staff. The, the, 14, the 14 cannot get anyone. Yeah. And you see, this now takes me to human resources management because we need to address these issues. There's what we call the employee uh, welfare system. And it is for the employer to make life meaningful, for the employee to upskill the morale, motivate them to deliver. And at that level, as a Supreme Court justice, it's like you have subscribed to a mono lifestyle that is devoid of social engagement. Because you must focus on this. If you are delivering justice, you must be on, you know, on, on, on the spot to ensure that you actually deliver justice. That means they may not be able to be contractors, to go into multi-source of income and things like that. They need that high level of comfort to be able to deliver. And now, if the CGN is claiming that the epileptic power supply should be thrown to the federal government, good. What about supply of diesel? Okay, the price is high. Mm -hmm. I know that recently the budgetary allocation to the Supreme Court was escalated from 100 billion to 120 billion. Okay, let's even assume that the resources are scarce. Can't you sit down to discuss it and see how you deploy effectively to sustain the integrity, the reputation, and you know the profile of the Supreme Court? But one of their concerns is that the CGN is not accessible. They've been calling for meetings and meetings, you know, and things like that, you know, and they even brought in the issue of moral rectitude, and this should not be the case. This I'm, I'm also case. looking at, uh, apologies, because I'm also, you know, looking at, you know, the, the kind of response. Of course, all these allegations that the judges have made, we can safely call them allegations, though, even though they are actually a recurring problem, not just in the Supreme Court, uh, but even the, the, the lower courts of, of record. But, but then these um, fights that they are, you know, fighting, so to speak, it's, it, if it is won, now that it has become a more public issue, it would also favor the CJN, you know, somehow. They, they're just, they're, they're not speaking for themselves, but even in common justices. So I, I'm also looking at the, the kind of response that he made, saying they ought not to be seen, they ought not to be heard, but seen alone. Yes, you should, you should say that as a leader. <clears throat> and that's why I started from the angle of public relations. You see, there is this leadership, emotional intelligence, that ensures that you carry your people along. These are issues the public should not read about. And I must commend the judge of the Supreme Court. And by the way, 14 out of the 19 wrote, so we are not talking of minority. We are not talking of marginalized experience. Mm -hmm. So they must have had it full. So if the Chief Justice of the Federation gave the required attention early enough, we will not be reading about this on the pages of newspapers. So I think I throw back to the table of the CJN. You know, he should have. And again, I want to say that please respect the office of the public relations uh, expert that you have in the Supreme Court. But sometimes in Nigeria, professionals are afraid to advise their principals. And when crises like this happen, they are the first to be blamed. This is purely a matter of communication. The justices that are complaining now express willingness to dialogue. You see, the, the contents are all there, and they, we need to learn from this. It, but then, when you escalate it to the macro level, Nigerians have been complaining about several things, which has been attended to. So I quite agree with you that if the CJN is now uh, kind enough to adjust positively to these demands and meet them, yes, it sustains you know, the morale, it boosts the confidence people we have that I can get justice from there. Let me cite an example. If, for example, someone has a matter in the Supreme Court and asks for about 35,000 liters of diesel to be delivered to the justice, and I mean, I'm just imagining, mm -hmm. you see, to meet that need. I mean, will you say, you know, this morning, I, I don't want to compare Nigeria with any other nation. I just mm -hmm. want to, you know, isolate Nigeria. But these conditions are not making us happy as a people, particularly from that region. You say, I, I, I always say that when there is a cry, then there is a crisis. Now, the issue with the CGN is simple. These people are accusing the Chief Justice of Nigeria of 
lack of transparency. When you say lack of transparency, they are accusing the Chief Justice of Nigeria of fraudulent activities with the resources. Because do you think that these people will do this kind of thing if they don't believe that the resources are there to do it? Absolutely. And that is why reference was made to the fact that even though they've not been enjoying the annual trainings abroad, he travels abroad mm -hmm. with his, his own family. children and family because when they travel, they are entitled to the compliment of someone to go with them for, by reason of their age. And the fact that the generator we have to go off at 4 p.m. And, and if you know how the work. judiciary functions, mm -hmm. that may be the time you want to retire to your chambers and study because as a lawyer or as a judge, whatever, it's like 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. So you are correct. But these allegations are out there. Now. And permit me to go into history. It should concern the government. And I'm glad the Senate president has given instruction to the Judicial Committee within the Senate, headed by uh, Bami Bami Dele. Dele, to go and investigate what is going on. And again, I will speak to that. If the oversight function of the Senate has been carried out effectively, we should not be discussing this publicly now. So proactively, you need to be proactive there. And the point we are making is that the CJN should not make the other justices feel as if they are subordinate to him. You see, these are brilliant. They've gone through, you know, lines of experience, just like himself. And if you, like I said earlier, even where it's the resources... A little, it's just a little more than the first among exactly. the, the others. So even where the resources are lean, you prioritize. I mean... If you get to the Supreme Court premises, you'll be impressed. Then, beautiful environment. And again, let me speak to this nation, Nigeria. So now, the Supreme Court must rely on Jisoo for power. What will it cost Nigeria to, even, even if you are not concerned about the, the other citizens, to, to establish a power station for the Supreme Court of Nigeria? We need Jisoo for justice. Absolutely. As long as it's scheduled, whether it's diesel, as long as as whether long as it's even so steady. Exactly. So what exactly is going on? It's you about. It's about. It, it, the man is rationing. I remember. Uh, is it uh, Sophocles who said, "Thou shall not ration justice." You see now, <laughs> and, and, and justice is even relative. Of course, everybody has their day. What even, is just justice even, of resources? Even, even the rich, <laughs> even the rich, will still also talk about justice. This is something that everybody, you know, holds holds dear to to one's heart. Ah. But but don't you get a feeling? Don't you get a sense that the judiciary, when you compare it with executive and the legislature, uh, there, there there is something wrong with it with the system. It does appear that the judiciary seems to be, you know, at the at the end of the ladder, always um, often forgotten, that often be, neglected. That, that may be by choice. There are several opportunities the judiciary has to correct some of the anomalies in the country. But today, when matters are brought before the court, for example, in trying to make the government do the right thing, if ASU goes to court now, what will ASU come back with? These are issues. And I keep saying it, if it affects others, it's coming back to affect you. But what? It, but what is going on now is, is interesting because we know of the story with the former Chief Justice, Onoge. Mm -hmm. His own problem was that he had foreign account. And people were saying, that is not enough crime for you to, to, to send the man, to send, or the executive mm -hmm. to send EFCC after uh, this man. They could have called but apparently, what these justices are accusing the, the Chief Justice of is even a graver offense. Of not, it's not your own money that you kept abroad, but they are saying that he is not transparent with the resources of the Chief Justice or of the or Justice the of the itself. Supreme Court Indeed. itself. Indeed. In other words, the man is playing monkey with Nigeria's money. <laughs> now that you have brought in the historical path of accountability, yes. let's step back a little bit. After Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, Justice Onohe mm. was to step in. You saw the drama mm. we witnessed. Yes. It was harrowing until the vice president used his office, standing in the gap for the president to ensure Onohe stepped to office. And when it was time to remove Onohe, 
the issue of these foreign accounts, mm. uh, non-declaration of, of assets came in. In fact, an order, an ex parte order of mandamus mm. was obtained, and we started shouting about ex parte order later, mm. to mandate the president to suspend him. And suspension is not the appropriate way of moving the CJN from office. But you saw how the drama went, and he was removed. And, and till date, he has not been prosecuted. Right. He has not been prosecuted. Right. See, so that means that drama was to remove him. Like remove Magu him, also yes. experienced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Magu has been promoted. Now, and this will bring some colorations into the, the fairness and the justice aspect of the national leadership. All right. And at that point in time, there were even allegations against the present uh, CJN, but it was not relevant then. And we need to move beyond all this. We need to move beyond but all we, this. You know, in other words, we are saying that if Onoge who have EFCC at his door. Yes. Why is the EFCC not at Tanko's door as we speak? So we are saying now that there has to be good. fairness. What right. is good for Onoghe is also good for Tanko. So why is the executive branch quiet? Except that we know that um, this man, the, 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 the Minister of Justice, has said that the NJC account should be proved. He's the chairman mm -hmm. of the NJC. The CGN is the chairman of the And may I, may I answer your <laughs> question, sir? Yes. Right now, the Senate is at the door of the CGN. So no, that's the Senate. Have, you that's you the may Senate. have to wait not for the executive, EFCC. Not the executive You see, branch. there are things we, ha we are almost tired of expressing. So your question, I know, is already answered by you internally. Mm -hmm. We know what is going on in this country. You see... We know what is going on. And it, we will keep going through the, you know, the, the tunnel of embarrassment if we don't sit up and upscale our processes. And I must commend the justices of the Supreme Court for coming out with this, whether it was leaked or not. And we use SAC 14 justices at the same time. So we are waiting that. to on, see on, on, on what where basis, this goes. On what basis will you even say you want to sack you know, these people for... This is Nigeria. And, and for Many people out, did not believe right. the former chief justice could be removed from office. You see, mm. Nigeria has capacity. If this country wants to carry out something, there are experts that we... You know, look at how Magu left office. Has he been prosecuted? He has even been They will find somewhere in the law to do it. He, exactly. But I, I, Ganifo I, I Ami told to me, ask. sorry, right. Ganifo Ami told me when he was alive, he said... If there is a case between a poor man and a rich man, I will find the law for the poor man. In our own case, we are finding the, the government is finding the law for the rich man, for the powerful man. So that is that's what we are seeing here. And of course, there are, there are various clogs now uh, in the wheel of justice. We we see criminal cases, um, you know, of um, highly exposed um, politicians. We see we see all the, all the rigma ruling. Uh, th that they do in court and and all that of course all this to to evade um you know the long arm of the law of course you can argue back and forth but i'm, I'm also wondering where we place the argument the lingering uh unresolved argument of financial autonomy for the judiciary in in all of this we we heard a while ago during the uh Houston strike that the federal um judiciary was exhibiting or enjoying some form of independence as against the uh, judiciary at the state level that was at the mercy of, you know, the, the governors. So where does this, you know, leave us? If the Supreme Court can control its own funds and then we are seeing these suspicions, these weighty allegations leveled at the quarters of the CJN, so where does this leave the clamor uh, yeah, for, for it, freedom? It, you know, some of us have argued in that direction. It's all a matter of everyone deciding to be just and accountable, you know. Whether you go to the local government level or state, if you even give money directly to local government, if the leader is not ready to deploy effectively, there will still be crisis. So we need to reinstate that system that is just, that makes people to do the right thing. And there are questions we're asking. We are not even debating what is going on in NNPC, zero remittance to the Federation accounts, the oil theft, what is going on at our ports, what exporters and importers are going through, we are not talking, you know, so different kinds of issues. Look at insecurity. Over almost 60 days of the, kidnapped, uh, the kidnapping of the victims of the train attack, 
The president is just instructed that they should make sure they bring them out. The governor told us they are communicating with them, but they cannot go and bombard them. And we have spent millions of dollars buying Tucano jets and everything. So we have a systemic crisis in the yeah. nation. So these are just symptoms of uh, what the big uh, problem that we have. So I say now that the highest court in the land is on trial. I wish the nation the belt. Oh, the that was justice right. is on trial. But this, the thing is not only a problem with, um, it's not only a problem with uh, the Supreme Court. I remember a story I was told recently about a governor who wanted to... Uh, who Sam, want... let's, let's just put a, a hold on that. We okay. have another guest coming okay. in, so we will channel um, you know, the, uh, that line of um, questioning okay. to our next guest. But we thank you, uh, Jideo Logo, for your valuable insights on the program this morning. Thank, thank you. you. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>